Yesterday, I was watching an interview between Dave Lee and James Dauma about the full self-driving 10.12 stack and all the new features. And James was pretty blown away by the fact that Tesla was able to throw 180,000 video clips or somewhere around one and a half billion images at an individual feature upgrade. He was pretty amazed by the amount of data that they were able to throw at basically just a small feature upgrade. But at the same time, I've been watching videos and reading papers about a whole bunch of new massive neural neural network models that are solving problems and becoming creative in ways that pretty much were unbelievable even a couple of years ago. So the question that's been forming in my mind is whether more data or a bigger neural network model is more important to solving full self-driving and does full self-driving actually need to become semi-creative in order to solve this for real? Let's take a look. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So first of all, I wanna say that I'm gonna leave a link to the videos that I talk about in the description below. So definitely check those out if you want more information about those particular topics. So what I wanna talk about today is whether more data or a bigger compute network or a combination of both is the most important thing for solving full self-driving. I recently did a video and you can check it out here about whether Tesla has enough compute power via Hardware 3 in their current cars in order to solve full self-driving. And this video is a bit of a continuation on that topic. Again, this is going to be very, very speculative because I don't have inside information about what Tesla is actually doing internally, so I can only give you data from the outside, but I think it's still a valuable thought experiment to consider how all of this stuff works together. And by the way, I think this t-shirt, which is available in the merch store, is a really good one for today because success is one of the possible outcomes for full self-driving. And by the way, Elon Musk said this exact same quote again in his talk with Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut, in his recent video about SpaceX, so it's actually worth it in two different ways, so there you go. Anyway, check it out at the merch store if you're interested. All right, so what's the difference between collecting more data and having a big neural network model? I think the more data is probably an easier thing to tackle, so let's just talk about that first. So anyway, as I mentioned, James was discussing with Dave Lee about one of the new things that they have in the Full Self-Driving 10.12 release notes. I did a video on that as well, and you can certainly check that out as well. But basically, the 180,000 video clips equates to around 1.5 billion frames. That's not really an accurate representation anymore because Tesla is actually looking at things as videos now, as sequential images, but whatever. It's, you know, effectively, it's a good way of thinking about it, but 1.5 billion images is a massive, massive data set by anybody's standards. And Tesla's using that amount of data to upgrade a feature, not to create a whole new feature or train something from scratch, but just to upgrade something. To give a little bit of context to this, DeepMind's revelation about their new neural network model titled Gopher, actually went through about two trillion words on the internet, reading, you know, two trillion words on the internet to train itself to become a conversational bot. And it's really amazing at what it does, but it looked at two trillion words. So 1.5 billion is nothing compared to two trillion words. Now, of course, that's just one small feature of what Tesla is doing. So they obviously have on the order of trillions to maybe tens of trillions of frames of video data on which to train. And it's obviously very, very important that the more you want something to be refined, the more you have to have it trained on a massive, massive amount of data. And again, to contextualize this with DeepMind's Gopher, Gopher is amazing. It was conversing about black holes and all of these things. And then the person asked the question immediately after that, what's 15 times seven? And Gopher said five. So clearly a major, major fail. It just didn't understand that at all and didn't understand it was an equation or how to calculate it. You would think that would be the easier thing, right? 15 times seven is a math equation which a computer should be able to solve, but the neural network completely failed at that. And in the context of a language or conversational bot, a failure like that is kind of cute and adorable and you laugh, 
But in the situation of full self-driving, a failure like that could equate to an automobile crash or potentially an injury or even a fatality. So this is, again, I talked about this before, but this is that stressor. This is that thing where you can't be 99% accurate for full self-driving. It has to be 99.9999999, you know, some number of nines percent accurate before it's substantially better than a human. It's a really, really intractably difficult problem to get solved in every single case. And just this morning before filming this, I watched Chuck Cook's most recent video. Again, link is in the description. In this video, he goes back to his favorite spot to try to make an unprotected left, and the car completely flames out, like the whole time. And it just gets into this infinite loop, making right turns and going around and trying again. So this is a situation where the car is failing. It's not a safety manner fail because it's safe, but it's failing in terms of getting Chuck to his intended destination. So if you were in a robo taxi as opposed to being able to take over for this, it would be pretty darn annoying if the car just kept going around in circles like this and never actually made it to the destination that you asked it to go to. So obviously this stuff is still in beta, but here again, you need a lot, a lot, a lot of video clips of that particular intersection or ones like it to get this vehicle over this problem. Again, I, I don't even know, looking at that intersection, I probably would bail out and go right a lot of times myself because it's a really, really nasty left turn. So anyway, the, the general, you know, getting to 95 or 98% accurate for full self-driving is a huge task, but it's something that Tesla has clearly done, but they need on the order of billions to trillions of more video frames to chase those nines to get this to the level where a human doesn't need to intervene to take over in these sorts of situations and get the car to the destination that they're heading for. All right, so let's turn to the neural network models. This is going to be a little more specific speculative again about Tesla because that's something that they really don't talk about a lot. They're willing to talk about data a lot more than the neural network models, in detail at least. So again, looking at something like GPT-3 and Gopher, which are OpenAI and DeepMind's new models, GPT-3 is around 170 or so billion parameters and Gopher is around 240 billion parameters. And again, if you don't know what that means exactly, think of like one of those mixing boards, those audio mixing boards with all the little dials. You've got, you know, on the order of 170 70 billion or 240 billion of these little dials that you can adjust to go from the input that you're taking in, which would be something like an, a text prompt in these cases, to the output that you want, which would be a text output. Or in the case of OpenAI's Dolly 2 or Google's Imagen, that goes from a text prompt to a visual output, something like a painting or a photograph. So these gigantic neural networks can produce absolutely amazing results. And it's really incredible. And especially to watch the progress just over the past, you know, even one year is just astounding to look at the difference between, for example, Dolly 1 and Dolly 2 and how much better Dolly 2 is. And then to think about what it would be like a year from now in terms of these larger models and how big of a model do you need to have? One of the interesting things is that we're not really seeing a level off yet. So you would think like, okay, if you go from 170 billion parameters to 240, you would get a minor improvement. You'd start to hit that logarithmic curve off and it would flatten. But what's happening instead is it's actually accelerating and you're getting bigger differences between the two as you add more parameters. So who knows how big of a model we need in order to make this stuff work, right? It could be 500 billion or it could be a trillion parameters or something like that. So of course, at that point, we start to look at running up against compute limits and we already are kind of doing that, but it is fascinating to think about how long we can continue to improve in a more or less linear fashion before we hit the roll off and start to get to diminishing returns as we add more parameters. So anyway, that's a fascinating area of research and it's something that nobody really knows the answer to at this point in mid 2022, but it is important to Tesla's full self-driving because of course the question becomes how many parameters and how big of a model and how much processing power do you actually need to solve full self-driving? That's a really, really important question. Now, of course, you don't need nearly as much compute power to implement a neural network model as you do to train it, right? So if you're training it, you need a much larger neural network model because you've got to have a lot of training layers in there, dropout layers, things like that. And then you've also got to repeat this process over and over and over and over and over again and do feedback and all of that kind of stuff. So you need a much, much more powerful computer, much bigger memory, much more processing power in order to train something than to deploy it. And of course, to deploy something, 
thing, you can refactor it and make it a smaller network and so forth. But there's only so far you can go between the training network and the deployment network. And I don't know if that's a factor of 100 to 1 or 1,000 to 1 or whatever. Tesla will know that in their particular instance, but of course they're not telling us. But let's say it's even as generous as 1,000 to 1. That means if your training model is operating at something like 1,000 teraflops, you only need one teraflop in order to operate it in your vehicle. And that, of course, is well within the processing power of Tesla's full self-driving hardware 3, which is around 144 teraflops. But what if the training network needs a million or a billion teraflops or something like that? Then you're well outside the envelope of what hardware 3 can do, and you might need hardware 4 or even potentially hardware 5 in the car in order to get full self-driving completely solved. So of course that's a really big outstanding question and nobody knows the answer to that yet either. My intuition at this point watching what's going on is that they're getting really, really close to the limits of hardware 3. So, you know, and James Dalma actually agrees with me about that because they, he talks about in his discussion with Dave Lee about how it's important that Tesla actually noted that they got a 1.8 frame per second increase in their speed by getting rid of legacy neural network stacks. So what they're doing is they're having to do some trade-offs, right? It's one of those things where if you have all the memory and processing power, you just keep like all the tabs open in your computer and all different kinds of programs running. But when you start running out of that stuff, you have to shut things down in order to make the computer more efficient. So they're kind of getting to that state in driving. And they just may simply run out of processing power with hardware three, and they may need hardware four in order to get to the stage where they can chase those nines, right? To get to 99.9999999% accurate as they're driving. And then finally, we turn to creativity. I just did a blog post about this. I'll put a link to this in the description if you're interested in looking at it. I was talking about it more in the sense of like, is this replacing human beings and being creative and everything? And how creative really is a deep neural network as opposed to a human being? Those are all kind of philosophical questions at this point, but clearly we're going to have to continue to ask them with the rate at which these things are increasing. But let's say that we get something that's as big as one of these models squeezed into something like an automobile's mobile processing chip. The, the computer then becomes somewhat creative in the sense of the way that it's able to look at the world and handle situations. And the question becomes, is it necessary for a computer like Tesla's full self-driving computer to be creative in order to eventually drive as well as a human being? Again, this is speculative, but my intuition is, yes, it actually does need to be. I'm specifically now thinking about our road trip and driving around in Brooklyn. If you haven't seen that video, you can check that out as well. Anyway, driving around Brooklyn, took a lot of creativity. There are cars that are parked in random ways. There are pedestrians and cyclists and scooter people and you know, whatever. There's all kinds of crazy obstacles. And you have to become kind of creative and engage in thinking about what everybody else is probably going to do in this situation in order to drive effectively in Brooklyn. And I found that full self-driving 10.11.2 was very poor at driving in Brooklyn, as opposed to most of the other places that I've driven where it does reasonably well it was really poor in Brooklyn. So it's obvious that a situation like Brooklyn, which requires a lot more thinking about how other people are going to react and what they're thinking and kind of modeling what other people are likely thinking in their own heads, that's a lot of creativity, that's a lot of projection, that's a lot of calculation that has to happen. It's taxing for a human being to do this because of course, especially in a situation where you're not that familiar, you might guess wrong and that could have really bad consequences. So anyway, I think that in order for Tesla's full self-driving or any other full self-driving to get to the state where it's driving better than a regular human being, it is going to have to engage in some sort of creative thinking about the outside world and a really deep understanding standing of the outside world. And that is very, very challenging. And again, what that might require is that I don't know what Tesla, they've got a bunch of different neural networks instead of one monolithic one, but let's say that altogether they've got somewhere on the order of 15 billion parameters. Maybe they need to 10X that. Maybe their models need to actually be using 150 billion parameters. I don't know, right? It seems like what's going to have to happen is their models are going to have to get much, much larger to solve some of the really crazy things. And I haven't even talked about places like India and Nepal and stuff yet where the traffic is really, really 
really snarly and nutty. In those places, I would guess that they will definitely need to jump up to hardware four or even hardware five in order to have the compute power and the creativity to drive in those very, very chaotic situations. So anyway, thinking back about all of this stuff, data is relatively easy, at least for somebody like Tesla, because they've got a lot of stuff in place to collect this. For most of the rest of us in the world, data is a primary problem, and it's a huge bottleneck that we can't get past. But Tesla has gotten past that bottleneck, so they're on to the neural network architecture itself and how big it needs to be. And that's a bigger and more intractable problem for Tesla, at least in my mind and my understanding of it, than data collection. At this point, they've got probably more data than they actually need. So it's all about the neural network architecture, how big it needs to be, and how creative it needs to be in order to solve full self-driving. So we'll see how Tesla does in the next year or two, but it is going to be a major challenge to try to squeeze that gigantic neural network into a itty bitty living space. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and thought provoking. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it, speaking of AI algorithms, and also consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much. You really do help support the channel. I know I've been traveling a lot recently and it's been chaotic, but all of the discussion that's been going on has been really, really helpful and it keeps my enthusiasm up and so I really appreciate it. And of course, if you want to join the team, check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Tesla Bot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.